Good morning! You are listening to the Alex Fuse Show, bringing you all of the news, sports debates, interviews with people you all care about, and so much more. Every single weekday on Dean College Power 88 Radio, broadcasting live from 7 to 8 a.m. And now, here's your host, Alex Fuse. Now live on the Alex Fuse Show, MLB inside reporter and senior writer for, for The Athletic, Mr. Ken Rosenthal. So Ken, again, this area of listeners are Boston Red Sox area centered. So when you look back at the 2019 Red Sox season, what exactly went wrong? Alex, I actually think it starts with winning the 2018 World Series. And it's just so difficult to repeat in this sport for any number of reasons. You can start with the toll it took on their pitchers, many of whom were starters that pitched in relief during the postseason. And if you remember, the Red Sox brought them along slowly in the spring, and they never got off to the start they wanted, and many of them were not quite the same. There's no question about that. The other thing is, this is hard to define and put your finger on, but when you win, it alters the dynamic of a team. It creates perhaps different motivations. And I'm not saying the Red Sox were selfish or anything like that, but instead of that all-for-one team vibe, maybe guys are a little bit more worried about their individual circumstances. They have some interesting individual circumstances. Look, your free agent after next year. JD, possible opt-out. So all these different things happen, and sometimes also it's just not your year, and that was certainly the case with the Red Sox. You mentioned Mookie, Mookie Betts, Ken. Are they going to let Mookie play through until the free agency, or are they going to test a trade market this offseason? I'm sure whoever becomes the president of baseball operations for the Red Sox will at least entertain the idea and perhaps listen on Mookie Betts. You'd be irresponsible not to see what you can get if you cannot sign him. And listen, they've tried to sign him and have been unable to do that. So I expect whoever gets that job will at least explore the market doesn't mean they will trade it, because if they don't get what they perceive to be fair value, they might as well just play it out and let him become a free agent at the end of the year again if they can't sign him. But the bar is low as well. All you have to do to beat what you would get if you gave Mookie Betts a qualifying offer would be, I believe, higher than the equivalent of a second-round pick. I'm not quite sure how the compensation will work. So that's not that high a bar, as I just said. Mm -hmm. And they can beat that in a trade, I am quite certain. Well, Ken, uh, the Red Sox aren't going to be in the postseason this year for the MLB, but playoff baseball is right around the corner. It's one of the best times of year. What potential matchups are you looking forward to most this season and the MLB postseason? Astros-Yankees is the one that everyone is pointing toward. That's the one that people think will be a battle of the two or two of the most powerful teams in the sport, with the Dodgers being the other. I can also see, if it comes to this, in the division series in the National League, a Dodgers National Series being very interesting because of the quality of the National starting pitching and the strength of their lineup. Bullpen's another question. So those two things in particular. But I'm also eager to see the likely matchup between the Cardinals and Braves because I believe the Braves are better, and I like the Braves as a dynamic team with young players and established veterans emerging pitching but the Cardinals have done a really good job in the second half putting the Cubs away really taking control of that division so that could be an interesting series and if it gets to it Braves Dodgers could be an interesting series as well Austin Nakuda wants to know what is the future for Josh Donaldson free agent at the end of the year the Braves I believe will try to sign him back and Josh Donaldson has been really comfortable there he's had a great year there I can certainly see that happening. He has a relationship with the general manager, Alex Anthopoulos, going back to their days together in Toronto. I can also see him looking for a good three-year deal, four-year deal, and 20 million-plus range, and maybe getting that somewhere else. You talk about the Yankees-Astros potential matchup. Are the Yankees too heavy on the right-hand hitters going up against the Astros starting rotation that's the best in baseball and probably the best in baseball we've seen in so many years? Certainly a fair question. And you're talking about Verlander, Cole, and Granke, all right-handed. And the Yankees line up primarily right-handed. We'll see who actually is on the field, given their injuries. But at the same time, it's a good lineup. LeMahieu has changed the entire complexion of it with his 
contact skills. So, yes, that is a concern for the Yankees. People talk about their pitching, but actually, that's a really good question. George Hathaway wants to know, what are some ideas that the league should do in order to increase fan attendance and ratings? Hey, George, we don't have all day. (laughs) I can list a number of things. I do believe the sport needs more action. Mm. And when I say that, I don't mean home runs. I mean balls in play. And we talk a lot about the pace of play, how the games go on too long, etc. I don't know that fans will mind three-and-a-half-hour games, if they mind them at all, and many don't, if there is a steady flow of action, steady things happening, doubles, triples, hit-and-runs, all the things that really have become less prominent as the game has become more dependent on the three true outcomes, which are home runs, strikeouts, and walks. That's where I'd start. For a sports reporter, Ken, how hard is it to create sources that are credible in this day and age in this business? It's hard in any day and age, and that's no different now than it would have been 30 years ago. And it's something that takes time, it takes experience, and it's not something that you can just snap your fingers and have happen. I've actually had young people ask me, hey man, get me, I want a source, get me a source. No, 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 no. You have to do the job. You have to build up trust with people and build relationships with people and get to the point, hopefully, where people will tell you things that you can build reports on and be trustworthy in the process. And this is my favorite segment on the show, Fast Five Quick Rounds. It's just five quick questions, and you have ever long to take to answer them. First one for you is, have you ever played the game Stratomatic Baseball? It's a baseball card game similar to Fantasy Baseball. It's one of my favorites. Alex, I did not play it. I am unlike a lot of the baseball writers who, from the time they were really young, wanted to be baseball writers. I was a guy who covered or liked all the sports, then covered all the sports. And it didn't really matter to me which one I ultimately became a professional at with writing. I just wanted to do one of them. Go to snack during the trade deadline. (laughs) It's changed over the years. Mm -hmm. I've gotten older. Back when I was young, I'd take peanut butter cups, now almonds, which are, I guess, a little healthier. Mm. Most underrated... Pop, popcorn, too. Ooh, that's I a like good that. one. That's a good yeah. one. Uh, one current or former player you would love to host a podcast with? Ooh. Uh, I'll say the late Tony Gwynn. Hmm. What Great is... talker. He, he yeah. was one of our favorites for every, every writer. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite story you've ever done in your career? Well, that's a hard question because I've done this a long time. Mm-hmm. But I will say the favorite event I've covered, and it really is the favorite story, would be when Ripken broke the record, mm-hmm. the consecutive games record in 1995. I was a 32, about to turn 33-year-old columnist for the Baltimore mm-hmm. Sun. It was a very big moment in Baltimore, in baseball, even nationally. The president and vice president were there. Mm-hmm. It was a really big deal. And... I wrote the front page column for the Baltimore Sun that day, and it's, I still believe, even after covering Olympics, Super Bowls, World Series, All-Star Games, working for Fox, and all the great things I've done, that's the highlight of my career. Most underrated baseball player you've covered in your career? Oh, that's a hard one. I don't know that I can give you a good answer there. Okay. I covered some great players. I've covered a lot of great players, obviously. And actually, I don't know that some of them were appreciated the way they should have been. Eddie Murray was that kind of player. Roberto Alomar was that kind of player. Even though they're in the Hall of Fame, obviously they're appreciated. I don't know if fans even understood how great they were. Mm -hmm. Last question for you, Ken. You've covered the game of baseball since 1984. What continues to drive your love for the game today? Just the fact, Alex, that it's something different every day. The stories are different. The drama is different. I love the season because it's essentially six, well, actually 30 six-month reality shows, 30 different reality shows taking place with all these different franchises. The postseason is a drama all its own. And then I have the offseason, which, of course, (laughs) has its own elements of drama. So I don't know how I can say I don't know how I can define why it's still something that drives me why I have this passion still just turned 57 
but I love it. Mm-hmm. And it's the sport I love, and also it's the process of what I go through with reporting and writing and even being on television. All of that I just get fired up about, and each day I look to do the best I can. Well, Ken, I appreciate you taking the time to come on the first episode of the Alex Fuse Show today on Power 88 Radio. Um, and it's an honor to have you as our first guest on the show. And where can the Fuse Nation follow you on Twitter and follow along throughout one of the best times of year, the MLB postseason on Twitter? Alex, all the best to you. Thank you.